Hello everyone, Reginald Scott here and welcome to the video. Now today's video is a little bit unusual because I want to talk about the Titan submarine disaster. Uh, and it's going to be a somber video because we're talking about the loss of five people's lives. Uh, and they obviously have friends and families who care about them very much, and that's going to be incredibly difficult for them. So I will try and be as respectful as I can on the subject. If you are not interested in this subject material, don't worry, there will be more content that is fully focused on cycling. However, this subject does actually cross over a little bit with cycling technology and materials used to create bicycles. So... Although the link is tenuous, it does have something to do with the general content on this channel. And I was just really fascinated by this subject and I really wanted to give my opinion on it. Now, I had never heard of this Titan submarine and there's a few big ironies about the name Titan submarine, which I'm gonna get onto in a moment, but I'd never heard of it. I'd never seen these news reports about this thing. And the moment I saw it, and the moment I started reading about it and reading what other people were saying about it, alarm bells were going off in my head all over the place. Long before we, the US Coast Guard confirmed that this thing has been lost. Long before, you know, it was only down like a couple of hours or been missing a few hours when my alarm bells were already going off about the construction and design of this thing. And this is where bicycles kind of come into it a little bit as well. So you know that I'm a big advocate of titanium as a material. I think it's the best material for making a bike out of. I think it's the best material for making pretty much anything out of, to be honest with you, aircraft, vehicles of any kind. I think titanium is, is phenomenal. But from my previous knowledge of deep sea diving submersibles, I knew for a fact that all of them are made out of metal. Excuse me, are made out of metal. The vast majority are titanium, some are made of steel but most are made of titanium because titanium is very light and you can really make the walls of the submersible thick and strong and it doesn't make the submersible too heavy so you're able to bring it back up to the surface relatively easily. So it's the perfect material. It also doesn't fatigue like other materials and it also doesn't rust. So if you're building like nuclear submarines, things like the Russians did, titanium is a fantastic material to use. But it's not gonna rust it's not going to fatigue as badly as other materials, and it's going to be strong and light, um, which means you can get your submarine to come back up, which is always an important thing with submarines. You know, a, a submarine that doesn't come back up is just a brick. I saw a tweet where somebody said that they believed that the carbon fiber part of the submarine had, had failed. And I thought, that's strange. Who on earth would build a submarine out of carbon fiber, especially a deep sea submersible like this that's going thousands of meters below sea level? Why would you build it out of carbon fiber? That seems almost idiotic to me. Now, I think it was clearly a case of cost cutting um, to commission the hull of a submarine out of titanium must be incredibly expensive. We're talking millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And I know that because these bicycles are very expensive, these titanium bicycles. And I know for a fact that the main reason why most bicycle manufacturers are using carbon fiber is not because it's the best material, but because it's the cheapest material to mass produce and produce lightweight bicycles. Okay, if you wanna make a lightweight bicycle for your company, it's a lot cheaper and easier to do it out of carbon fiber than it is to do it out of titanium. Although the benefits of titanium massively outweigh carbon fiber. So clearly, all this talk in the media about this Ocean Gate company using carbon fiber and being pioneers of new technology, this was all cost cutting. This was done to maximize profits for the company and make the submarines repeatable. And he had, the, the owner, the CEO of this company, who has unfortunately died, he had other submarines that he'd made previously, at least one other submarine. And it was designed around the same system, whereby you have a carbon fiber tube, which is the main body of your pressure vessel. And you have two titanium end caps, which basically fit on. One which is just a solid end cap, 
and the other one with a window in it and hinges in it and then it that is bolted to another titanium seal which is then glued onto the carbon fiber end cap on, onto the carbon fiber um, tube or pressure vessel so that makes you a complete submarine by not commissioning the whole thing out of titanium he saved a lot of money Okay, so that I think is the main reason. Now the other submarine he has, has a full perspex or glass frontage on it. So you get a really nice wide view. But that submarine isn't designed for very deep diving. That, that goes much less depth because that, that perspex or glass dome on it would just collapse under pressure. So there are, when I, when I discovered this thing was made of carbon fiber, there are several flaws which i can immediately see before any engineer even talks to me i know there are several flaws with this design the first issue is this here is a titanium tube this is going to represent our submersible okay or our deep sea submarine this tube is made of titanium now this is less than one millimeter thick this is 0.9 of a millimeter so it's um just less than one mil thick if i had a carbon tube this thick i could break it open-ended like this i could crush it put it on the floor stand on it and it would break let me stand on this one right it's difficult to do because it's round but i'm now standing on this with 70 kilos of my body weight on one foot and it's absolutely fine okay silly demonstration but it's absolutely fine this is a homogeneous material okay what do i mean by homogeneous no matter where you look on this cylinder no matter where you put the pressure on this titanium cylinder the material is going to respond in the same way because it's homogeneous it's the same all the way around okay there is very little in the way of disparity or difference in the construct or the crystalline structure of the titanium in this tube all right so when you start to put pressure on this tube imagine if it was capped at both ends when it fails it's all going to fail at the same point okay or it's going to fail pretty much consistently if you have a carbon fiber tube carbon fiber tubes are either woven or laminated okay so it could be woven like a filament winding or it could be laminated and layered like a normal carbon fiber bicycle okay the problem with that process is it's very hard to replicate the exact structure all the way along the tube there are differences and it's very hard to consistently test you can produce a tube like this make it very long and chop it up into bits and test each one for its failure point and in theory they, sh they should all fail at about the same pressure okay because it's consistent the material is consistent if you have a carbon fiber tube and you chop it up into bits and you test it at different pressures until it fails, you'll actually see inconsistencies because the layering of the carbon fiber is never exactly the same in all areas, especially if it's made by hand, you know, like a bicycle is. But even if it's filament wound by a robot, there's still inconsistencies. It's not a homogeneous material. It's not like a liquid metal that is then cooled and becomes a, a solid piece right so the problem with having a carbon fiber tube as the main body of your submarine is it could all be very very strong but there might be one area which is slightly less strong and that's where it's going to fail and you have no warning that it's going to fail in that location and you have no way to test how or what pressure that it's going to fail, okay? Because you cannot replicate the same tube over and over again, it's virtually impossible. And the owner, the CEO of the company, when asked if his 
vehicle had been tested or this, this carbon fiber structure had been tested, he said, no, it's not possible. Now, he's actually lying. I think you could do an ultrasound scan or something uh, of the, the material to see if there was any fault fl flaws or, or porosity or anything within uh, regards to the, um, the resins, for example, that were used, or if there was any air bubbles in the material, anything like that. You could have done that, but he didn't do that, according to what I've heard. And if you were to pressure test these carbon fiber tubes until they failed and you were to do it multiple times to get a general idea of their failure point, even though it wouldn't be terribly accurate, that would cost a lot of money. So again, I think he was cost cutting. He wanted to make a lot of money. What was it? $250,000 a hit to go down on this submarine as a passenger. He wanted to make a lot of money and he wanted to reduce his cost. So number one, make the submarine out of a cheaper material. Number two, don't test it because that costs money. Testing costs a lot of money. When they test cars, they drive them into walls and stuff, don't they? And they totally destroy cars. That must cost the car companies a lot of money. But they have to because those cars need to reach a certain standard, which this submarine didn't have to reach a certain standard because it was being used in international waters and it wasn't under the jurisdiction of any country. So he was able to circumvent any of those restrictions which govern the use of these kind of vehicles, which is just, well, he was playing fast and loose. The next major issue that I, I discovered with the, the carbon fiber material, or I, I immediately thought of with the carbon fiber material, is the disparity between the end caps and the carbon fiber. Now, this bicycle, for example, behind me, is made completely of titanium. So if the frame is going to fail, it's going to fail because the titanium has failed, okay? There's no carbon fiber within this bike frame that is weaker than the titanium. Like you see these fancy bespoke um, titanium bike frames with the carbon fiber seat tubes in them. Uh, Rides of Japan just bought one. I hate those things because it's like you're putting in a inferior material into a superior, in my opinion, bicycle frame. So the failure point, you've increased the likelihood of failure and the failure point is going to be around that carbon fiber tube. It might not be the tube itself that fails, but it's probably going to be the connection between the mating, between the carbon fiber and the titanium. Because if you have two materials, um, I need a piece of carbon fiber, which are, I'll have to look for one. But if you've got two materials, right? One is titanium, one is carbon fiber. As they stress, and they are going to stress, especially if you're diving down to like 3000 meters below sea level, as those things start to stress, the titanium is gonna stress differently from the carbon fiber, heat, and cold is going to affect the titanium differently from the carbon fiber. And what's going to happen is that seal that you have, the seal where they put the end caps, the titanium end caps on their carbon fiber tube, that is where you're going to start to get cracks. Because the, the titanium, when it cools, for example, is going to shrink at a different rate than the carbon fiber tube. And that's going to put enormous stress on the glue. And they literally glued these things together because that's the only way you can stick carbon fiber to a metal is glue it. You can't rivet it or weld it. So it's going to, it's going to cause enormous amount of stress on the resin that you use to glue the two things together. And this submarine supposedly did 40 odd dives before this disaster. So I imagine that those 40 odd dives were just stressing and stressing and stressing those points where the titanium met with the, with the hull of the, um, the carbon fiber. Now they said they had a sensor system, a strain gauge system as it, as it was, some kind of strain gauge system around the carbon fiber tube that was monitoring the stress of the carbon fiber. But that's useless because you, you don't know what your failure point for that tube is. You can try and calculate it with guesswork. You can say, we rate this carbon fiber tube to 5,000 meters below sea level, but it could fail at 
two and a half thousand. You don't know because you haven't tested it properly. And you have no idea of the material properties that you're using, the carbon fiber material properties that you're using, whether it's going to be consistent or not. So the fact you've got these strain gauges monitoring the strain or the load that the, this carbon fiber tube is under while you're descending is useless information. As the strain increases, the whole thing can just implode at a moment's notice. It takes less than a second for that implosion to occur. It's almost instantaneous. As soon as it fails, bang! you'd be flat as a pancake, which is probably what happened uh, a few hours after the sub started to descend. The, uh, the Cold War listening stations that the Americans have that were designed to listen for nuclear submarines from the Russians heard an explosion or implosion. So these guys probably died on the way down. Uh, I think they heard it like an hour and a half or two hours into the dive and you descend for at least two or three hours. So those guys didn't even make the seabed before their, their submarine imploded. So this strain gauge idea is just total BS because it, it doesn't help you. And like I said, you can only put the strain gauges maybe around the carbon fiber tube. You can't put them where they're probably most needed, which is around those seals. And what I need to see is evidence that they were testing those seals and that they were checking the glue that was sticking the titanium end caps on. The final thing which I've heard, which somebody had to tell me, uh, which I didn't know just by looking at the submarine, was that the window on the submarine was not rated for the depths that they were going to. It was only rated for maybe a quarter of the depths that they were going to. That is just insane. That alone, on its own, voids any safety rating that this submarine could have possibly had. Um, and we know it didn't have any safety rating. So there you go. It just strikes me as incredible that someone would be so reckless, not stupid, but reckless and greedy. I think obviously a big part of this was greed and hubris to make a deep sea diving vehicle out of a material that has never been used before to make deep sea diving vehicles. And I, the only reason I can see that you would ever consider carbon fiber as a material to make anything this important out of, even bike frames, is because you want to save money. That's, that's the only reason I can see, because titanium has worked time and time again. And the fact is that in the, in the public, not public, but in the private sector of deep sea submersibles, there hasn't been an accident in 35 years. And all of those things are made out of either steel or titanium. And there hasn't been an accident in 35 years, fatal accident, as a result of vehicle the vehicle failing or uh, from implosion. It just hasn't happened. Pilots who pilot the submarines have crashed or injured or even gotten killed. But they haven't gotten killed as a result of the vehicle itself failing. They've gotten killed through other reasons. Okay, so... 35 years, none of them have failed. Now, and that is because they make them out of titanium. Now I want to talk about the two big ironies of the Titan's name. I'll finish on these two points. I find them quite fascinating. One has been said by other people, and my other one is unique to me. I, I've not heard anyone else say this. So number one, the name of this submarine was Titan, and it was going down on the Titanic. Titan and Titanic do share a common namesake, if you like. They are both related to the Titans, which were these demigods, these giants of Greek mythology. It was the Titans that gave fire to man. Okay, They were these giant, powerful creatures. And the gods ended up going to war with the Titans over the fact the Titans gave fire to man, Okay, because the gods disapproved of man gaining that wisdom. All right, so ancient Greek mythology, wonderful subject, but you have the Titans. Titan means something great, strong, and powerful, right? Something almost invincible, something able to stand up to a god. The Titan submarine was named after these people. The material titanium gets its name from the Titans. That's where titanium gets its name from. 
So the submarine was named after the same thing that titanium was named after. But the submarine wasn't made of titanium. It had titanium end caps, but the majority of it was made of carbon fiber. That I find very ironic because if the submarine had actually been made of its proper name, titanium, a titan, it wouldn't have imploded. I think you're probably going to see this when they discover the wreckage a bit more. If we ever see pictures of the wreckage, I don't know whether we ever will, but this is my theory. What you'll probably see is one of two failures. One is the, the carbon fiber body of the thing will be completely flattened. They would have got sucked together, actually. They might even be welded together, cold welded together, two titanium caps like this, with the people and the carbon fiber in the middle. That's what you might find. I don't know. Um, or if it was a window failure, if the window of the submarine is what actually failed, which is very likely if it wasn't even rated for the depths they were going to, as the, the high pressure water rushed into the submarine, I think it would have blown the end caps off e each side. So you'll probably find, if that's the case, if you find one end cap way over here and one end cap way over there, then I think that the failure will probably be the window. That's my guess as a non-expert. That's, that's what I probably would expect to happen. Because if the, the center of the submarine collapsed because it failed, because the, the main pressure body failed, I would imagine that would suck the two sides together as it imploded. Because the titanium is still going to be much stronger than the middle of the, air, the, the craft. And everyone in the comments, experts alike, are saying that they think it's the carbon fiber that failed. Which makes sense. Okay, the second irony of the name of the submarine is that 14 years before the Titanic sank, a gentleman wrote a book, I forget the name of the author, called um, Futility, I think it was called, The Futility or Futility. And it was about a ocean liner called the Titan, the largest ocean liner in the world in this fictional book. And the Titan strikes an, earth, uh, strikes an earthquake, strikes a iceberg, and sinks. 14 years later, the Titanic, named after the Titans, strikes an iceberg and sinks, and it was the largest ocean liner in the world. Ironic, right? Bit of a bit of a coincidence. Here's another thing. The submarine was named the Titan. You in I know this for a fact. In the world of sailing, you never, ever, ever name a ship to give it bad luck, all right? You, you choose your name very carefully. You never name a ship after a ship that's already sunk, and you would certainly never name your ship after a fictional ship which had sunk, right? If the Titanic wasn't real and it had just been a TV show or a movie, you would never name your ship the Titanic. You just wouldn't do that. It's idiotic. You also, I don't know why they did this, but like the HMS Unsinkable. You, in my opinion, you would never name a ship Unsinkable. It's just asking for trouble. So whether you believe in coincidence, whether you believe in spiritual things, whether you believe in, you know, um, fate, it was very ill-fated for those people to climb on board a submarine called the Titan, named after a fictional ship, which sank in the same circumstances in which the Titanic sank. Very, very, very ill-fated. So what can we learn from this? Number one, businessmen will risk their lives and your lives just to make more money. Hence why many businessmen will make bikes of carbon fiber rather than titanium, because these things are expensive to make. Number two lesson, just because somebody's an expert or well qualified, just like the CEO was very well qualified, he was an engineer. Just because somebody's an engineer doesn't mean they're right, doesn't mean they're not lying to you, and doesn't mean they're not going to play fast and loose with the physics just to make a quick buck. This happens all the time. Do be suspicious of experts because experts are human beings and human beings lie. 
I think that's a very important lesson. The friend of Bill Gates, not Bill Gates, the friend of uh, Richard Branson, who paid to go on that submarine and chickened out last minute because he saw how it was constructed, that's the person you want to be. When somebody tells you you're not an expert, you can't have an opinion on this, tell them to F off because you can use your common sense and you can do your own research using a smartphone. Like I say, I am not an expert, I'm not an engineer. I'm not an engineer, uh, an engineering expert in deep diving submersible crafts, but you would not have gotten me on board that thing for a billion dollars or several billion dollars. I would not have climbed on board that submarine. The moment I looked at it as a non-expert, I could easily tell with common sense that there was something fishy about it. And the, the moment I heard the word carbon fiber, I was done. Like that was it. I was like, there is no way you are getting me on a carbon fiber submarine. Never. So there you go. Uh, that was my video about the Titan. Hopefully it was fairly respectful. I, my, I am deeply saddened about the people that lost their lives. Just because somebody's rich doesn't make them a bad person. Um, and yet they, they made terrible mistakes. But when I think that a father and a son both lost, both lost their lives, it's just, just tragic. Tragic. I've got kids and I would think that was, that was just awful. So there you go. Thank you for watching the video. Sorry it's a bit depressing. Uh, proper video to come tomorrow or more cycling related to come. Thanks for watching. And as always, guys, whether you're uh, riding in a submarine or cycling on the road, do stay safe. Okay, folks, just quickly. This one is that tube I showed you, which is 0.9 millimeters thick. This is 0.7 millimeters thick. This one is 0.4 millimeters thick. So this one, it's not even a tube, actually. This one's flat sided. Um, this one is less than half a millimeter thick. It's almost paper thin. Um, these are all titanium. These two are three 2.5 aluminium vanadium mix. And this one is six four aluminium vanadium mix titanium. So this one is slightly tougher than these two, but this is 0.9 so less than a millimeter thick i'm standing on it 70 kilos oops I'm balancing myself on the table no problem this one is what is it um yeah 0.7 so a little bit less than the first one no problem and this one 70 kilos on top of it less than half a millimeter thick Try doing that with a carbon fiber tube of equal thickness with no end caps on it and see what happens.